So we just got done checking the air filter in our truck, and I want to say every 10,000 miles you should change one. It all really depends what kind of driving style you got. If you're doing a lot of highway, city driving, I wouldn't recommend changing it all that often. Maybe every 10,000 miles or a little more, a couple of years. But if you're doing a lot of going down backcountry roads like I do, and it's really, really dusty, then I change it more often. So, to do the air filter on the Pontiac, my Pontiac Bonneville SSEI, we need a one hand tool, and that is a number three Phillips sc screwdriver. This is the air cleaner box, students. It serves a very useful purpose. It lets you easily put sand into somebody's engine that you do not like. <laughs> I wish. Anyway, the air cleaner box on this car is held in by two number three Phillips screws. One, two. And then four, like stick out fingers on the bottom of this thing that slide into this thing and form a tight seal. So there's no air getting in and around the air cleaner. So the engine breathes filtered air. Anyhow, these screws here that I'm loosening are captive, so they're not going to jump out when they see your ugly mug and fall down into the engine and make you mad. See, no matter how hard I, tug in, I go tugging on these, they don't come out. So I'm going to take this off now, take, lift this box up and out of the way so we can access the air filter. When you have the second part of your air cleaner assembly off so you can access your air filter, check the engine inlet screen for any dirt, like right down there, or any damaged fins. Damaged fins aren't that much of a big deal, but the dirt, that's a big deal because this is where the engine breathes. If you can't breathe good, you're not going to get good fuel economy. Anyway, moving on, this is the air filter. Now. It's curly, because I was playing with it earlier. Tell that to your kids. Look in the air filter cavity box for any mouse nests or other pieces of debris, and make sure that the, the channel where the air comes into the car is free of obstructions. Same thing here. Check for any mouse nests, make sure all the baffles are clean, and all that good stuff. And don't break that little sensor off, because that guy's important. That's going to make me mad. The screwdrivers get suicidal. Once you have the air filter out of the car, check your wire mesh. Make sure it's not broken or anything like that. Check your rubber seal around the edge of the filter. Make sure it's still pliable. Make sure it's not dry rotted, broken from the edge of the filter. And make sure that no part of it is crimped down or dirty air can get past it and sneak around and get into the engine. Then thirdly and lastly, check the pleats. Make sure there's no big piles of dirt between them. If there is, you, it's time for new air filter. And also, make sure that they're not torn. Make sure that this little valley here is intact and it's not torn. So, I'm probably going to replace this air filter pretty soon anyway because I think it's one of those no-name cheap house brand air filters and that'll probably set me back 10 15 dollars depending who I buy it from so once you've checked your air filter tuck it back into its air filter box and then here are the little let's get that out of here for now here are the little cavities I was talking about that have these four fingers on the bottom of this box that slide in there and then it all locks together like it should Once you have your air filter properly secured in the box and the second piece properly attached to the, the little holes in the bottom of the box and the screws lined up and you're very confident that you've got your air filter seated properly, you can go ahead and tighten down the screws to where they're pretty snug because like I said in my truck video, you don't want them coming off when you're going down the highway. And since you're just going in the plastic, you don't need to curl them tight and um, you don't need to really crank them down super tight like Superman because Superman don't work on cars, he fights bad guys. 
So just snug is fine. These screws aren't going anywhere. So snug them down, make sure they're tight, not loose. And then it's time to put this Goomba back on and he should just kind of slide on using that oversized grommet on the front. You slip right over that like a good thing. Clamp, tighten it back up, make sure this is nice and snug, make sure your screws are good, and make sure the little four fingers on this part have been locked into this part. Also, while you're under the hood of your Pontiac, take time to look at everything. The brake lines, the fuel lines, the throttle cables, everything and anything that you think needs to be looked at. Check the level in the battery if you can put water in the battery. Check the level in the radiator, your windshield washer, your brake fluid, your oil. I just changed this car's oil no less than, I think, two weeks ago, so it should be good. It is good. If I can stop shaking. It's right at the full mark, and it's running Mobile One, so that's what it likes. That's what I've been running in it. Check your spark plug wires, make sure they're not dry rider or anything like that. Check your 17 belt or belts if you have a supercharged engine. Check your radiator hoses, make sure they're okay. Check your condensers, just, just give everything a general once over. And if you see something that you don't like, take care of it. And he decided, well, we want to wash our cars. So we washed our cars all right. She waxed hers, I didn't wax mine because I didn't feel like it. Anyway, I paid, I paid special attention to my rims because I've got those chrome metal rims. I washed them really good, then I waxed them. So I want you guys to tell me, which rims do you think look better? The ones on my Pontiac or the ones on my mother's car? We both have chrome rims, so leave, a, leave your opinion in the comment box below telling me whether you think my mom's Park Avenue rims look better. Well, my uh, Bonneville SSEI rims look better. Anyway, until next time, this is Keykeeper signing off.